Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name's Kevin, too. Look at me. <laughs> Ooh. Nah, I'm Will, if you didn't already know that. Welcome, guys. Welcome back. Thanks for uh, tuning in, watching us. Was that your actual impression of me? Oh, no. I want to see the actual impression. <laughs> I see so much. Like All right. 11 times in a row. I interrupted your intro. I'm sorry. Uh, It's fine. Where, where, where was I? Start oh, over. <laughs> uh, we're on the internet, guys. Find it. Find the internet and find you'll find internet. us. Now, you can follow us on all the regular spots. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, of course. Yeah. Uh, what? Man, you really knocked me off. I did. Uh, Twitch. Twitch and Patreon. There you go. Um, and yeah, Gmail. We I encourage you by the last to episode. hang out with us on uh, Twitch. We have Alex and Parks doing a lot of streaming over there during the week. Uh, and we also post that content over on YouTube. So if you subscribe Correct. there, you will get notifications about all of it. Yeah. We encourage you to do that. Let's see what goes down. Um, this is our filler fun day now. Uh, yes. This, I guess, is it our second or third? It's been on a Friday. It feels like the third. I think it's the third. It feels um, like it. I, don't know I really true. enjoy this new show, show schedule. So I'm How just pretending I? like it was always the case. That's fine. You know I'll, I'll I mean? accept it. Even though the first one was my idea. It's okay. Sorry, Kev. Anyway, <laughs> second um, one was also my idea. That's fine. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, with all of our filler Fridays, filler fun days, however you want to call it, uh, we start off not with a card of the day. No, no, no. It's a little bit more special. It is a little bit more, more special. Specialer. How great of a more sentence More specialer. Is that? It's uh, <laughs> extra more specialer. <laughs> we kick off with the Kiki Weekly. Yeah. Uh, which is still my favorite named segment. It's a good one. Um, uh, I a- think random card of the day is probably my favorite segment, though. It's just more fun. Yeah, it is, because we don't know what's going to happen. We yeah, plan this one like at a time. So, a um, um, little Easter egg. It resolves Easter egg. Kiki Weekly was going to be our name. It was for, for a, little a little bit. bit. And then we, but then we were like, no, that's a terrible name. <laughs> yeah. We decided it wouldn't work for a podcast. It's no. better for a segment. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, it worked out, though. Um, this yeah. week, though, we uh, thought we'd give a little shout out to our commander players. Oh, y'all. This, um, this is, and this was your idea. Do you want to talk about it or do you I want do. me to? I'd love okay, to. This is, this is one I am fond of. Yeah, go for uh, it. And it historically marks the first time I've brought us a Keekly Yeah, Weekly. this is the first time. Ke- Keekly you. Keekly I'm Weekly. proud of you. Thanks, man. So, guys, <laughs> as you know in Commander, you get to do all manner of silly, obnoxious things. What was the picture you described to me the other day? So, the picture... Um, I don't know if it was on episode or not, so I'll just say the whole thing. Yeah, it was yeah. like it was different mm-hmm. memes for the different formats. Mm-hmm. Timely for this episode, it is. Uh, the one of standard was two babies like slap fighting. <laughs> um, modern was like two guys fisticuffs. Yep. Legacy was a duel, uh, like fencing, fencing, and then yeah. vintage was an actual duel with like pistols and all that stuff. <laughs> and then commander was a dude on a T Rex with the T Rex had laser arms fighting a guy <laughs> who's on a dragon with like a bow and arrow and. All of these are very accurate, and, especially yeah. the Commander one. Yeah. Yeah, Commander's ridiculous. The weirdest stuff happens in Commander. Yeah. Which so, is cool, though. You get to do some unlimited combos. Ooh, yes. unlimited things. Uh, so, one of the more common, I'll say, uh, yep. the best-known combos is uh, an infinite mana combo with Ooh. our good friend Deadeye Navigator. Which is a touchy subject, I think. Uh, yeah, because I think he should be fam. Yeah, um, but while thing. he's still here, <laughs> while he's still with us, we can talk about him. Um, and you can do this actually with two different cards: um, uh, Peregrine Drake mm-hmm. and uh, Palancron. Um, yeah. So essentially, you play. It doesn't matter which order you play it in, either Dead End Navigator, Peregrine Drake, Palancron, whichever. Mm-hmm. Um, but as soon as the second piece hits the field, you've got the mana for the combo. You're set. Because mm-hmm. uh, what you do. Is you pair really in my mind the best options to get Dead Eye first, and then Peregrine or Pal- Palancron because you can untap everything and yep. just start immediately. Yep. So Dead Eye Palancron, his Soul Bond effect lets you attach a blink effect to something. Mm-hmm. So you blink your Peregrine Break or whichever Palancron, it is. Palancron, whatever yep. it is, comes back to the field. You untap all those lands. Yep. You then uh, use their Return to Hand ability. You put it down. Yep. Yeah, do it again. Infinite mana. And again and again and again. You just keep repeating it, and you get to do that as yep. many times as you'd like. You get floating mana for days. Yeah, it's really, really yeah. cool. Um, and it's there's sweet. a lot of ways to win off of that. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite ways is actually um, it, at one point, I believe, was a legacy deck. It's a high tide deck. But <laughs> okay. um, the idea is that you stroke of genius your opponent mm. to make them draw their entire deck, and nice. then you just pass turn. 
which is just super dirty, <laughs> which is why I like it. <laughs> like, that's wow. so messed up, right? That's great, though. Like, stroke of genius for your deck. All right, pass turn. <laughs> yep. Like, that's really messed up, but it's a really fun way to win. Oh, man. Yeah, that's evil. It's sort of like mill, but not mill. No, that's... Uh, yeah, I think you it's know kind of I mean? better than mill, I right? think so. Man. Hmm. I, I really like, like that. that. But the, obviously, there's an infinite number of ways you can win with that. And there's infinite something. mana gives you infinite any, options, any options. Really, yeah. Really, yeah. So, a very cool combo. Uh, the basis of most blue strategies i guess um, would you say it's there it's definitely an include in a lot of blue decks mm -hmm. um and should be mm -hmm. um now there's some i guess uh that want to stay lower to the ground sure um sure. but yeah <clears throat> if you're running blue like that's a two card include yeah it's not taking up too many slots and it gives you outs to infinite mana which seems great yeah if so. yeah don't yeah don't shake your finger <laughs> infinite mana that is uh that wins you games people yeah that what, wins you games <laughs> yeah good for sure um and Deadeye Navigator is only touchy right now because people are talking about banning. Uh, I don't know if it's going to happen. Me specifically. Yeah, uh, I know a lot of people actually wish it was banned uh, uh, solely because of combos like this where it just it's it gives right. you too many outs to too many things. Um, yeah. It's weird for me to hear banning Deadeye Navigator because I'm not a commander player. Sure. And like it's not played anywhere else, right? No, like it's, it's not good it's anywhere It's so else. bad everywhere else, but um it's interesting to hear about it you know the considerations on both sides whether it should or should not be banned well i mean there's so. it always brings up interesting cards right like soul rings a card that yeah people talk about getting banned uh probably less than more so yeah i think yeah. so and i've i've changed my mind i waver back and forth yeah. but you know we did an episode on that like episode three yeah four i think so i'm not really? against soul ring um i like that it's in commander actually i know he does I mean that's fine. Difference of opinion. Fine. I'm not gonna fight. It's fine. It's fine <laughs> for once. <laughs> um, it's fine. All right. Did an episode. All my points are there. <laughs> Go watch it. Um, <laughs> I say nothing. Shameless else about plug. It. Uh, okay. So the main content today is <laughs> your suggestion, uh, which I think was sure. a fantastic one, and we're gonna go through. Uh, and talk about a lot of formats with this, but why don't you talk about the basis of what your thought process was? With sure. This? So this is the first time ever we've decided to do an episodical kind of segment, right? Ooh. We've got Ooh. our uh, 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 Road to 100 Wins. Mm -hmm. uh, Parks is in a league right now. So we've yes. got series on Twitch that are happening yep. every week, but we didn't have one that happened on the podcast right. for listeners <clears throat> specifically. So this is kind of the first time we're doing that. Yep. Um, what did we decide to name it? What we, didn't. <laughs> we didn't good so I'll, I'll save that for the title <laughs> what what were the options we said one format functions uh format frenzy um bunch of stuff around the word format yes all of which included alliteration of some kind yeah so we'll we'll pick whatever Format freaking something <laughs> we're family friendly family friendly <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway uh so yeah we we kind of wanted to talk about Get, get a little more in-depth in the formats and the yeah. different formats. Um, because Wizards, this is off the cusp of Wizards announcing that Legacy is going to be a format that's broadcasted yep. during the uh, Pro Tour. As of uh, next year. Yes, and they're reducing coverage of Modern. Yeah. And they're talking about bringing Frontier into the Which is forefront. interesting to me that yes. they're thinking about that. So a, yeah. a lot of shifts in the format. So we, we kind of wanted to just give everyone a refresher, see where we're at. Yeah, you know, talk about them a little bit more. Give a little bit of history on the formats. Mm. Talk about the current state of the formats. Uh, talk about just where we're at with them and mm -hmm. how they've evolved as things have 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 moved on. Things like that. And, Precisely. Um, that's really it. We just wanted to start. We're going to start today with standard. Yeah. Um, start at and, the bottom. And we'll. <laughs> and now we're here. Um, <laughs> and we'll work our way. I had to. I mean, you set it up. <laughs> Uh, we'll work our way through all of the formats at some point. Oh, you just um, gave me diabetes. You had it before that. <laughs> That's true. And I still do. But sure didn't help, Kevin. Uh, I like oh. making your diabetes worse. You did it. It's fun. That was not sweet. Guys, all right. <laughs> Let's jump into it. <laughs> Episode one of our adventure into the formats. Yep. Kevin. Yep. Why don't you tell me what standard is for the people, for All the right. lovely people. For the lovely people. Not exacerbating my, my uh, chronic illness. So, uh, standard is the one and only format that is not, I guess you would say, eternal. Um, it's the format that basically is the most recent few sets, or few blocks, 
and you get to only play with those cards that has a very short ban list very short restricted list generally um and so you just play with those cards and it rotates every time new sets come out you get to rotate some of the old sets out which keeps it sort of fresh and exciting every time yeah. right yeah. um it's yeah. also the most widely played i would say it's the easiest to get yes. into uh for for the new players it tends to be the first step into magic uh solely because it's the current set it's the yeah. current format and it's because it's so widely played you can generally find tournaments for it which we'll talk about in a little bit mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. it's very accessible to people so yeah that's exactly right that's that would be my starting point as just describing mm -hmm. it and it is statistically even the most played uh, right. the most common form right. of magic um every you know you said we talked about it but every card shop has a standard night yep would guarantee it um so yeah uh standard is pretty <laughs> popular um yeah. and probably as much as it is liked, it is also probably as much disliked yep. by people, <laughs> what, by sourpuss over here, like Kevin. Uh, and and this arguments like that always perplex me. Not that, like, I was going to say I don't understand. I, I really don't understand. Because, uh, I mean, it's magic. So, and I've never played a bad kind of magic, except for one that I didn't get to play. I don't think standard's bad. I just don't. I tend not to enjoy it as much. So when I say I like it less, it's more because no, I just tend not... It. You say you hate it. That's exaggerating because it's funny to piss you off. <laughs> oh, okay, well, that's fair. I mean, <laughs> All right. genuinely, uh, uh, like, I've played <laughs> Standard before. I played during uh, Esper Control Days with RTR and uh, Theros. Yeah. And I really like that deck. Um, yeah, that was such a You got all the fun deck. Planeswalkers. Yeah, Ashiok, Jace... Elspeth, all the good stuff. Um, <gasps> but anyway, I, I really liked playing that deck. I thought it was just a fun deck. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't play at tournaments or anything, but I did enjoy that deck. And I think that was arguably not actually a good standard, but it was one that I enjoyed. Um, okay. I think this standard that we're currently in, um, I don't have anything against this standard. I think one of the top decks, which we'll talk about, is green-black, which is one of my favorite com mm -hmm. color combinations, and I actually really like that deck. Um, but it sure. just doesn't standard in general just doesn't it doesn't feel as fun to me as stuff like modern and so sure. when i say i don't like it i should honestly be saying it's not my favorite i enjoy other all formats right. more i'm not thinking i don't think standard's a bad format all right um, i do <sighs> good there is one point of standard that i do uh i don't take issue with but it is a little annoying for for the players who try to keep up with standard it can be expensive and i know we're going to talk about this a little bit because to get into standard it's actually relatively the cheapest other than like popper right. um it's it's generally the cheapest the decks are a few hundred dollars versus a thousand dollars right like exactly that's and that makes it accessible to get into magic to keep up with <clears throat> standard can sometimes be a bit of a hassle um only because if you're going to keep up with it long term you're going to have to cycle through decks you're going to have to get new cards you're going to have to keep up with it whereas a format an eternal format generally the decks that are good are just going to be good for the most part they that changes a little bit but uh. generally you know you think about um for instance like grixis decks in modern right now grixis death shadow is obviously the top deck in modern right um and that deck will just be good for the most part. I'm, I think if they ban Death Shadow, which is all of the thing, that changes things. But Grixis itself, as a color combo, will be good. It becomes Grixis Delver or something like that. And that makes it fairly easy to replace the cards because you're always going to have a lot of the same staples. Whereas sure. Standard, because it rotates, the staples are going to change. And so you have to go into it a little more. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um but again, kind of, you made the point for me is that things will things can get banned, which changes oh, yeah, yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And even though we say standards meta is changing, eternal formats don't. The printing of new cards, period, changes it changes everything. Formats. You're right. You think about vintage and how many mentor decks now run the field. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And how many decks are obsolete thanks to mentor because yeah. they just die too soon. Yeah, like they, most of them. Um, <laughs> but. Like, I, and I think the argument comes with that argument, with the new cards mm -hmm. coming in argument. Um, because they're new cards coming in, they're generally relatively cheap. So, sure. for instance, Mentor right now, um, it's not brand new, obviously. It's been out for a little while. But right. um, I think it's still between like 10 and 15 bucks, which in sure. comparison to vintage stuff is super cheap, right? <laughs> like, that's well, nothing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Death Shadow being one of the top decks, 
Death Shadow itself is not an expensive card. It's actually relatively cheap um, because right. of the reprints and things like that. But right. you know, I, I guess it, and it's more of an annoyance than anything else. The reason I pointed out is I think for those who are in standard for the long term, it can get a bit tedious, right? To have to buy new cards all the time and yeah, things like that. Yeah, it can. Um, it's better to adapt and evolve. I think um, yeah. it kind of keeps me on my toes as a magic player. Uh, keeps new strategies in front of me because um, you don't want to you don't want to get stuck in one way you don't want to play is it control forever when sure. all you've got to play is like cancel yeah and i don't know and, and that's the appeal of standard right a lot of right. people think of that as an as an appeal of standard and that's why it is a successful format because it does change it rotates yeah. um so i don't think it's all bad i just think that the price thing kind of gets annoying that's all that's fine and that's yeah. a valid point yeah um so yeah that that's a little intro to standard um yeah. let's talk about the history because standard's been around literally since the game's been around <laughs> uh started back in 94 yep and uh we're here in 2017 so been successful for a while way to go magic when standard was there. vintage -ish. I just slammed that, and I did not mean to slam that. <laughs> I just thought you were trying to make a point. No, I don't know. You had some objection to what I was going to say. I did not. You're um, correct. <laughs> but yeah, since uh, since day one, Sanders has been around. Uh, yep. When Competitive Magic first started really in 95, when it got really big, mm -hmm. um, Standard was the only format around, and that's fine, because they were like, what, three sets? Yeah, um, and it was different back then. Very we didn't different. have play sets. No, and this that's is... the biggest difference in our my first mind. point. Many yeah. of you may not know, but there used to be... Uh, there was no restriction on numbers of cards and decks. Yeah. The strongest deck at one point, 20 mountains, 40 lightning bolts. Just bolt them. Do you see the line? <laughs> yeah. I love that that was a deck. And it was, you could not beat it. Yeah, I mean, how do you? Because you had you counter no, it. That you, doesn't matter. You got more bolts. So you like, got no cares? blight steel to run into. No. You've got no Jace. <laughs> You've got no Karn. There's, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's a whole different thing as or it was at the time. As awesome as the cards were back then, um, very few of them said, uh, win the game this way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, you didn't, and the creatures to that point were not overpowered. No. Right? No. And if they were, they just died with a few bolts. Yeah. Which is fine, because you've got 38 more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no problem. Uh, um, yeah, so back in the day... Um, it was one of the first few, uh, one of the first rule changes really was yeah. you could only play four of any card excluding basic lands. Which eliminated the 40 yes. lightning bolt deck. Yes, balance. The, <laughs> yes. the ban hammer came through. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which was a good call. <laughs> absolutely. Magic would not have survived. Really. Uh, yeah, how would, if it had survived, would that deck still be the, yes. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like. It, because if they didn't do that, they'd just have to print something that was better that you could yeah. win faster than that bolt. Yeah, and to God, I hope there's not. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's yeah. As made perfect sense. Um, and one criticism and goes into the history of magic is mm -hmm. uh, banning in magic. Um, and one my wife doesn't understand and hates at all. Why make a card if you don't get to play with the card? Yep, frustrates her. Yeah, which I understand. Uh, but as as a competitor, I get it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. Sometimes there has to be a banning. Yeah. Like there, that just has to happen. Yeah. There's like re there's reasonable uh, rule changes, and as we've seen recently, <laughs> very much so. We'll get into that. Um. But banning through the years, uh, really have just made sense. I don't think there's been many surprise bans. Would you say? No, I don't think so. I mean, generally, we we actually talked about this before the episode started. We were we were going over this and saying, you know, when a when a deck hits about twenty percent of the meta. That's when at least I would consider saying, hey, maybe this needs to get a second look. Maybe this, right. there needs to be a ban. Um, not saying there should at that point, mm -hmm. but maybe there needs to be. If it starts getting more than that, I think you really have to start considering, okay, this is taking over. Maybe yeah. we should do something about it. And from, my, from what it looked like in the history uh, books of Magic and in Standard, it seems like that was really how it panned out, right? Like, if yeah. a deck was taking over, if it was over that 20% mark, okay, let's look at it, let's do something about this. Mm -hmm. And they held to that, right? Like, yeah. it's not like they ban things all the time. No. Um, but when a deck takes over, you gotta do something about it yeah. in a format that you really want to be expressive and make different decks and things like that, so. Yeah, and really, decks and specific cards. Specific cards are really the problem yeah. um, because of variance, and you wanna see some variety. Uh, so, bef besides these first few bans that we've had this year, 
Uh, we can go all the way back uh, six years to 2011 to see our last set of standard bands. Yep. Kevin, you remember what those two cards are? I do. Uh, I know one was Jace. Yes. Uh, the other, if I'm not mistaken, was Stoneforge Mystic. Bing, 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 bing. Uh, Correct. Both of which have proven to be very overpowered cards. Yes. Uh, on the, <laughs> uh, on the uh, eve of their banning... Is that right? Yes. On the eve of their banning. <laughs> I had to remember which word first. Uh, the GP they were played at, Jace was a play set in every single top eight deck. That's a problem. <laughs> yep, that's a problem. Uh, Stoneforge was a play set in half of them. Also a problem. Yeah, also pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so it <laughs> just came down to uh, tournament usage, and yep. it turned on way too many things, so yeah. Wizards had to eliminate that. And uh, Jace is still, actually Stoneforge as well, Yep. Still banned in modern, right? Yes, both of which are banned in modern. There's oh, actually man. an argument to be said, and we've argued about Jace, so I'm not going to talk about that, but sure. there there has been an argument over Stoneforge Mystic a little bit as to whether it should be unbanned. My mm. take on it is I think it should probably still be banned. I think so. Um, I'm saying that without really doing a whole lot of digging into this, so keep that in mind. Yeah, but that's my like, knee-jerk reaction is no. But. Yeah, it it just is so good, right? Mm-hmm. Like, do you want to get a batter skull? in like no time at all yeah mm-hmm. why not right like that seems good and that's the thing you it can just, get what do you want batter skull skull clamp sword sword yeah i mean skull clamp's banned too oh i forgot yes that's one of my points here i forgot I got banned <laughs> in modern. Um, um but what do you want but yeah like, i mean you get to choose right and it turns on so many there's things there's that legendary dagger that turns into a 1313 demon that thing <laughs> it was it was from it is not playable in modern though <laughs> If Stoneforge was not banned, though, uh, it makes it better. You, um, you take different things, yeah, but still, yeah. You, I mean, you take swords over that. It just turns just on too many things, and it's too efficient, yeah. right? Like, yeah, it's its, it's own cheap. deck in Legacy, <laughs> like, yeah, which makes perfect sense. I mean, <laughs> it does. It's so good. Yeah. Um, so before that, though, we can jump back even further, six years, uh, to see the Artifact Affinity bans. Ooh. This was the biggest and shall be the biggest ban list, hopefully, for the end of time. <laughs> um, there were eight things banned. All during, of which, yeah. rightfully so. Yeah, so... And didn't actually turn off the deck. No, not at all. <laughs> it just slowed it down a little bit. It didn't uh, turn it off. Yeah, so March 2005, um, when Affinity was making its way through Standard, wreaking havoc. Uh, Wizards <laughs> it was, was like, Standard, right? Yeah. Like Wizards decided, all right, nope, seven of the eight decks, that's enough. Yeah. Uh, so, Arcbound Ravager. Uh, Disciple of the Vault, Dark Steel Citadel, and then all of the artifact lands. Yep. Gone. Good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It yeah. Is, so, like, <laughs> yeah. the thing about it, Ravager is just way too good. It it oh. makes affinity in modern. Yes. It It's just way too good. Yeah. Um, I think in modern yeah. it's more balanced, but I just mean, in general, it's a super powerful card. Definitely. The artifact lands turning on the affinity for artifacts way too easily is, <laughs> like... There have been arguments I've heard um, from people like LSV that the artifact lands are like one of the number one cycles of lands that just should not have been printed. Yeah, that's um, fair. They flavor wise make so much sense and they're yes. they're so cool to have. But honestly, I like it for uh, casual play just to like just to break them. Right, like it's just fun to break cards and of stuff course. like that. But and like they're banned. That's why they're banned, <laughs> why they're banned everywhere else. Like they're yeah. just too good. Um, Precisely. The Disciple of the Vault combo is insane. Yes. Um, especially with Ravager, right? Like, you get to sack the artifacts, ping them for one, and you get to to move over the tokens. Like, that's just way too good. Yes. Um, and so all of these bands make sense, mm-hmm. I think. And it was just Disciple, too good. Disciple of the Vault is one is part of a deck, and maybe it's only this this is the only deck, but it's the only deck I know of that's a turn zero win right you can do it without putting it's the disciple um um the hulk into hmm you know what i'm saying i know i think i know what you're talking about the i i think i know what you're talking about i know there was another one is it with glint hawk idol this one no this okay so i think there was one with like glint hawk idol or something like that that didn't include the disciple hmm. Interesting. Um, but i think i mean that got banned real quick too so um it was also the thing about turn zero wins is you have to have the perfect hand right right so like i don't like those decks personally but that's all of sure but this one lets you fetch out things for your win well, then, with uh yeah. protein hulk and other yeah. stuff yeah um so that got banned uh <laughs> and then before that guys uh 2004 
Skull Clamp. Yeah. And that was the only card banned for that entire year was Skull Clamp. Repeated two draws is way too good. Um, yeah, it's excellent. In Cube, this is one of my favorite combo cards. Sure. Because it's, and I've talked, I think I talked about this last, epi- last episode, in fact, how if you have a token generator, like a young pyromancer, oh, a mentor, a bitter blossom, <laughs> something like that, you just instantly have card draw for days as long as you have skull clamp out. And if you fetch it with trinket mage, which I also talked about last episode, yeah, uh, it is a very, very solid combo. And it do- it means that you don't have to waste slots on cantrips. That's uh, true. Which I think is really important yeah. in a cube format where your cards really need to impact pretty hard. Mm-hmm. So that that's just one of my favorite combos. I love yeah. skull clamp. Way too good though. <laughs> yeah, skull clamp is very good. Um, you don't even use it to buff a creature really ever. No, uh, you but never you can do. if you want, but no, you draw cards. Well, you put it on the mm-hmm. one ones to kill them and draw cards, and yeah. then you equip it to your big fatty that you think they might kill. And that way, if they kill it, you get to draw two cards anyway. Yeah, and you're just so it just doesn't guy, matter. So yeah. <laughs> like, like um, it, it's a very versatile, very good card. Yeah, um, and very, very deserves the ban. It's banned in Popper too, and it's just a nasty banned in Popper. No, it's not. Sorry, it didn't. It wasn't banned in Popper. It led to the changes in Popper. Yeah, where you don't get to include on commons. Uh, yeah. That's called peasant. Yep, you get five on commons. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, and then we come to our merry little year, 2017, 2016 season, which arguably was a very one of the more interesting standards over the past year or so rough yeah it rough was rough. standards might... so it started with the rise of mardu vehicles in my mind ah yes which just took yes, over yes. it was a huge thing mm-hmm. um it it just got out of hand yeah the numbers what back did they up, ban the did they for ban mardu for mardu um one thing that hit mardu over the head and then oh. two others that were just okay. in a bunch of decks so yeah. smuggler's copter was mardu's right. super in yeah. Uh, they also, with that band, Reflector Mage and Numerical. The Numerical. <laughs> Numerical. Yeah. I like that. Um, yeah. Uh, both of which, as far as the Emrakul and the Reflector Mage go, mm-hmm. were just solid includes in so many decks that they exactly. were just, they were everywhere, right? Yes. Um, and so they just banned those out of basically that. Um, Smuggler's right. Copter, sort of the same because it goes in every deck, but it really made Marty Vehicles shine. Right. Um, it fit the theme of the deck fairly well, obviously. It was a vehicle, it was crew a bull. Um, yeah, I think, and I think it's crew, crew one, one, I think. And it drew you cards, essentially. Um, it did. You have to loot every time you, you got to loot. Yeah. God damage. You get a 2-2 two, two flyer on turn two, essentially. Yeah, I mean, it's just too good. Yeah. Way too good. Um, so that led to not the downfall of mardu vehicles by any means oh, no, no, uh no. as it still i believe is a deck right now it although is. not as powerful um it but it definitely it definitely notched it down a little bit um then came the sahili copycat combo mm. uh and which 100 this... took over <laughs> yes this is and to be fair this is one of the few decks that competed with mardu yes right that's so fair. before sahili ride made her appearance um, Mardu accounted for about 21% of the meta. Yeah. When Sahili Ride took over, they mirrored each other at 26. <laughs> each of them were 26%. Yeah. That's insane. Is it not? That's <laughs> over 50% of the meta was two decks. <laughs> like, that's insane. Um, and if uh, you don't know, that combo being Sahili Ride uh, copying the Feldar Guardian card, yep. which lets you, it basically lets you do that infinite number of times. It was Splinter Twin, essentially. Yeah. in standard right like that yeah. was how it felt basically and that's how it was so yeah, that's they was. quickly banned feldar guardian emergency banned yes uh, about a week before mm-hmm. a pro tour a or week or a GP? two i think it was a gp okay. uh, a, a string of gps but yeah. yes uh, um they quickly got rid of that yeah um and i still hold that that was the wrong card to ban from the combo but i it's fine i don't know how i feel on that one yeah. solely because sahili rai isn't Without Feldar Guardian, Sahili's just kind of a bad card. Exactly. But I also think Feldar Guardian's not that great without Sahili, right? No, but it, you get to do some cool things with Feldar. Actually, I'm wrong. Cat Tribal. Exactly. Okay, fair enough. Exactly. I'm <laughs> I'm in the works of brewing up a Cat Tribal deck, so I really wanted Feldar. Yeah, that's fair. Fe- imagine this. Feldar, Anointed Procession, uh, Regal Caracol. Yeah. That's really, it's really good. <laughs> so you get, um, what is that? Uh, for so that's six cats. Yeah, right there. Seems pretty good. Yeah, Damn I, it. I, I Damn agree. It. 
I guess, on that point. I think they were thinking Is It Control would take over a little more, and that's why they left Saheeli. Uh, I don't think she even... Go- she doesn't, she go doesn't that, really though. go in it, though. Exactly. That's my thing. Like, yeah. it, there's nothing that it really... That she does in that deck. I just... I don't know. It just... It's a whole weird thing. Yep. Um, anyway. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. After uh, Felidar's ban, uh, we move into our most recent bannings. Yes. Um, am I getting this right? The three Felidar... Oh, of course. Of course. Marvel. Yeah. It was Marvel. So... Af- took over. Yeah. After Saheeli left, there had to be a deck that competed with Saheeli Ride. The one that did it best was Marvel. Then in the power vacuum, once Saheeli Ride, the <laughs> copycat deck was no more... Uh, Marvel just let loose and got to play. Um, a fairly reliable turn for Ulamog. 10%. Yeah. T- yeah, you got a 10% chance each game. And that's pretty good in a game of Magic. Yeah, and like, it actually increases each time you crack <laughs> Marvel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? So if you're able to, it'll take a while if you with the first one, but s- still. It happens. Yes, it happens. Um, so this is an interesting band. And it kind of speaks to yeah. Wizards' um, intelligence in designing formats, um, some mistakes that they admittedly made, um, and just the way they make their game. Yep. So I'll go into some of the mistakes first. Uh, it wasn't supposed to work that way. There was no big fatty for Marvel to hit until they changed the way their sets rotated. Right. And they actually just changed them back to the old format. Yeah. Uh, because they realized players didn't like it. It didn't up. work. Yeah. yeah. So essentially, uh, you had the uh bfc battle for zendikar mm-hmm. interacting with kaladesh which it never should have no it didn't happen uh or wasn't supposed to on their yeah their thing and wizards outlines their outlines why that shouldn't have happened and, mm-hmm. and yada yada on their website um but along with that there were still answers to marvel that were printed yes this is where i take issue with standard players guys there were plenty of answers to you destroy take, artifacts. Take like, issue with Ned Deckers. With Ned Deckers, yeah. Strictly 100% yeah. Ned Deckers. I like, Dispossess, man. Freaking Dispossess. Dispossess is so good. It's so And I nasty. know it was run. I saw it in some deck lists. I However, saw it in sideboards, but in that's sideboards. it. If you know a, a deck is part of the meta, just include it. It hits so much else. It does. You can Why hit, would you not include it? You hit like, Fat Caster. You hit... <laughs> Fatcaster, if you didn't know, Torrential Gear Hulk. Yeah. Alex, shout out to you. Uh, <laughs> Fatcaster Mage. You hit um, um, the other Gear Hulk that's in the green black decks. Bradius Gear Hulk. Yeah. Bradius, so that's three decks right there that I can use my Dispossess on. Of the most prominent decks, too. Yeah, of not even like just fringe decks. These are mm-hmm. the most prominent decks. Why would you not run Dispossess? Um, I don't know. There's also by force destroy X target artifacts for you red decks out there. Release the gremlins. Release the gremlins does it. I mean there was destroy so X much for it. Yeah. I don't know why people didn't run more hate. Yeah. The reason some of you may be thinking, "Oh, hey, that still doesn't work. Marty's just too good." No, all this stuff is cheaper than Marvel. Yeah. You can either leave it up until Marvel is played or if you have dispossessed turn 3, you can do it at any time. You don't have to have Marvel on the field. Yeah. You search their hand, graveyard and library. Doesn't say on the field. Nope. It's I, everywhere. I don't I just don't understand. Dispossess being the biggest one for me, why was that not run? That card is insane. I don't know. Um, I don't know. You guys let me down. That's all I'm saying. It's okay. We let ourselves down. Yeah. Us we standard all did. players. Um, um so yeah, wizards they're very careful with standard for the most part, right? Mm-hmm. S- certain things break them, certain things are too strong, and this these two ish years i'll say a year and a half of just formatting mistakes yeah really just kind of just bogged standard down and the cat combo that was just outright that was just a mistake yeah that was outright I mean, printing they missed it yeah which, magic admitted or wizards admitted that was a mistake that implored the whole thing of the play design group which is now being implemented yes uh which i'm happy about so yeah. i i think on one hand this past year and a half like you mentioned has been a little rough on the other oh, hand, yeah. where we're at now, is actually a pretty healthy standard, I think. Yes. I think we've got a good variance of decks. There's Absolutely. obviously the top three, which I believe, <clears throat> uh, Black Green, yep. um, Teamer Energy, yes. and what was the third? Mardu. Mardu. Yep. Duh. So, um, yeah, the percentage is Black Green 16. <clears throat> You're right. Mardu's 13, tied with Teamer at 13. Yeah. So, yeah. we've got a healthy variance. Uh, there's also the fringe decks, the control decks, is it mm-hmm. control, American control, things like that, that are being played, mm-hmm. which is good. That's a healthy standard in my mind. Yeah. I think with the play design group uh, being implemented, 
uh, I think we're going to start to see hopefully a continual healthy standard, right? Yes. Um, I'm not saying there won't be bannings. I, I, I don't want to, you know, say that. But ideally, with this play design group, they're going to hopefully eliminate that for the most part. Yeah. Um, that's I mean, what they're there for. I don't think I'd be unhappy to see one banning each season, really. I um, mean, yeah, it happens. It right? just, it means a few things. One, Wizards is listening to its consumer base. Yep. Uh, it's listening to <clears throat> the professionals who are playing these decks and saying, yeah, this is definitely too good. Guys yeah. who have played the game for 20 plus years yeah. and, and understand that things get broken. Um, so it means they care about their game, right? Yeah. They don't want to see it get just not fun to play. Yeah. So bannings to me, I'm not super upset about them. Yeah. Um, Except the Aether works. Just because that could have been avoided. Yeah, I feel like... But... Even so, there's an argument to be made. You don't sure. want to make people play with certain cards to answer other cards. That's fair. That's why they banned Dredge. Yeah. Because it was a game of sideboards after that, according to Wizards. Which it, which is really kind of true, because you just play Tormod Script and hope you win. <laughs> yeah. Or Relic or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's sort of the current <laughs> state of Standard. The question becomes, how do you play Standard? Where yeah. do you go? Uh, what do you do if you want to play Standard? Well... You go to a local game shop. You go Any to anywhere. Game. That's sanctioned. Yeah, anywhere that sells cards, really. Um, that's, <laughs> again, that's sanctioned. Um, and yes, they will probably have an F&M. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if not every Friday, most Fridays, they will be playing yeah. standard. I know um, one of our local game stores here, uh, they do a limited Friday sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, or they might have moved that to Saturday, actually, to have Friday specifically for standard Standard constructed but even so um standard is going to be the format usually because it's the cheapest it's the most popular and it goes back to being the most accessible right this is the way people get into Mm -hmm. it this is the way people start off as hopefully if they want to be a competitive magic player later on and so um there's different ways to play Mm -hmm. standard obviously there is constructed there's sealed there's draft all of which are going to be accessible to you if you're near a game store um and outside of that just on your own you can always just do that you know with your friends uh yeah, of that's course. always an option no matter what format you're in on top of that though standard is also played everywhere else yeah. gps pro tours worlds everything um yeah. standard hits everywhere so you're going to be able to play it of course no matter what and of no course. matter what level you're at too yeah uh, definitely so, yeah. um but kevin i know what it is yeah i know where i play it how the heck do i get good at it all right so we talked a minute ago about net decking being bad um you should net deck <laughs> yeah um we 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 playfully coined it bench decking yeah um for the sp- explicit purpose of understanding the meta right mm-hmm. you need to be able to do your homework so if you're looking to get competitive get good get real good <laughs> you need to be able to open up whatever it is goldfish top eight yep. whatever your website is and pick apart the meta a little bit what cards are being played more are there any cards that shut those down? Yep. Are there any combos that kind of get around the strategy of that deck? In standard, you're going to have primarily aggressive decks yeah. taking the meta, while the deeper you go in the season, more controlly combo decks start to emerge. Generally, yeah. Um, like, for instance, aggro 78% of the meta right now. <laughs> yeah, I it is taking it. I have it in my book. It's not a lie. <laughs> um, yeah, it's and it is on the eve of ours and Amon Cats, mm-hmm. right? That's our... our two baby sets yep right um so thinking of ways to um get around that or think of aggro decks in a different way there's a crested sun mare budget deck Mm -hmm. that's running around which is sweet praying sanity is a standard deck right now exactly Um, there are a bunch of fringe decks that pop up and you to the to the extent of you know knowing what's going to be played you should know how to play against those decks even if they are fringe decks you should know how to play against them and personally one of the best things i can think of to do is if you have a magic online account just go play some leagues go play some constructed leagues you're going to run into tons of different decks Mm -hmm. um and if you have a friend who is also maybe practicing for a tournament you guys just switch up decks every once in a while and play each other yeah um i think it's really important to first of all have the deck in mind that you want to play and definitely, definitely practice with that more than anything else you want to be able to to know what interactions are going to come up and be able to plan for those no matter what yeah um and and pick out your win conditions against certain decks because it will change um that being said i also think there's something uh to playing other decks that you know mm-hmm. you may not play uh or that you don't mm-hmm. necessarily want to play at that moment mm-hmm. 
but that you want to learn how they're gonna they're gonna react to your deck definitely. Right? Um, definitely i think that's that's something that i think kind of goes overlooked sometimes a lot of people stick with their own deck and that's fine i think that's definitely the focus of what you should do sure um but try different decks just see what's out there uh get the experience of all the decks that way you know what you're up against yeah that's a great point um do your homework yeah study it's all about homework and when we say net decking we're not saying 100 percent. pull a deck list go to a tournament and do it yeah we the practice has to be there to make that net decking worthwhile yeah. on top of that you should uh again study the meta figure out what's going to be played at to the best of your ability and plan for right. that if you need more hate cards you need to have those sided in or in your main board depending on what what mm-hmm. you think is going to be there so don't 100 percent net deck a list uh one for one but it is a good starting point for oh, you. yeah absolutely and we we talk about all this in our net decking episode yeah. um but a bonus one i'll tack on and these are all really applicable to every format sure um, but this especially uh learn how to sideboard um yeah, God. <laughs> yeah that w- could have fixed the marble pin um <laughs> yeah learning to what answers to include are important uh, if you're going against the mirror match, do you need to include other things to answer that? Yep. Um, if I'm a cat tribal deck facing another cat tribal deck, should I include things like cast out, things like impeccable timing in my sideboard? Yep. Maybe. Um, just playing around ways to uh, puncture the meta. Yep. That's, that's what you got to do. All important stuff, um, but definitely practice, practice, practice. That's the whole thing. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta know your deck. Um, and F and M's are a great place to practice as well, not Absolutely. just online. Absolutely. Um, F and M ideally you obviously you go there to play games and ideally you'd like to win but it is also a way to learn the deck just have fun with the community as well and so it's it's less competitive but it gives you that opportunity to really practice in person yeah it also sets you up if you're planning to go to a gp or something like that to know if you've never played in a real life tournament or something like that Mm -hmm. as i hadn't before i played in fnm it was a different experience playing in real life you know fnm versus just playing with friends or playing online um, it is a very different experience. So Absolutely. The is. nerves hit occasionally and you have to get over it, yeah. but you get used to it and that just comes with practice. Yeah, so. definitely. Playing in person is a great way to, to get better. Improve yeah. your game. Heck yeah. Grr and guy. <laughs> all Mama, right. Mama, daddy, grandma, grandpa. These are all good people in my life. Good. I'm happy for you. All right. Anything else on standard? <laughs> uh, guys, honestly, no. Um, it's a safe place now to go play. <laughs> it is you a safe try place. It. <laughs> it is standards and safe place now you can go try it cool uh, yeah. well awesome uh next week we'll move into another format and we'll continue mm-hmm. this uh for yes. as long as it takes to get through all the formats so um yeah. we hope you enjoy this little mini series within mm-hmm. the podcast we really enjoy it i yeah. think it's a really good and helpful tool also so. someone let us know if we should do commander as a format yeah yell at us yeah it's a little bit weird because it's commander but <laughs> yes <laughs> laser but- shooting dinosaurs but <laughs> um it can, would be interesting oh, to do an can episode can that be the name of a format laser shooting dinosaurs? laser shooting dinosaurs well with all the ixalan cards coming out maybe oh, we'll get man. a dinosaur tribal yeah. um with lasers uh <laughs> all right so with every friday episode we also have our question of the week which we always ask on monday uh and we roll it over and we oh. figure out all these answers culminate them and I talk about them. Process them. I try to out. guess them. You sometimes. try to guess them, which is really fun. Um, <laughs> the question of the week this week was, what is the best man land oh, in yeah. Magic's history? There's a lot of good ones, a lot of old ones, things like Treetop Village, uh, or the new ones, things like Shambling Vent, uh, and everywhere in between. Yep. So there's a lot there. I've really only got two guesses okay. as to hit our list. I'm throwing Muta Vault at you. I think Muta Vault won. Okay. I'm going to say came in number two. Mm-hmm. Or number three. I'm not 100% Ink Moth. Okay. Other than that, I have no idea. For once, you're not far off. All right. Mm-hmm. Third place with four votes, we have Mutavolt. Okay. okay. Um, I'm okay with that. So yeah, Mutavolt being very good. Yeah. Right? So why Mutavolt is good to me, mm-hmm. it's everything in a tribal deck. Yes. Um, it gets turned on by all the lords, every lord ever. Um, and it can go in anything. Yeah. Because it taps for colorless, you turn it on with colorless. It's just a reliable... It's that solid 2-2 two, two that yeah. turns into whatever you need it to. If you need it to get in there, it gets in there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Second place. Yeah. <laughs> Family friendly. What? It does. It's Second a place, reliable guy. Second place, Ink Moth and Nexus with a oh. total of five votes. Yeah. Uh, Infect just beating is good. out Mutavolt. Infect is amazing. It's a separate win con on its own. Uh, yeah. other than just basic creature damage so it it's pretty awesome 
Uh, it makes for affinity decks and it makes for infect decks. It's everywhere. Yeah. Um, so it's great. It does also turn on uh, affinity, which is important. So, um, so keep that in mind. Um, forgot about that. Number one with a total of seven votes. Ooh, ooh, wait a minute. Is it that one that turns into the big guy? That's so vague. <laughs> the one you use with Vampire Hex Mage. <clears throat> Dark Depths? Yeah. No. Okay, what is it? That would have been a really good one. That was not on the list at all. Oh, wow. Surprising. Uh, Celestial Colonnade. Help me. Okay, so here's the thing. I like this. I'm going to say why. Do you know what? Cel- no. Do you know what? Oh, no, you don't know. That's why I need to help me. It's the Blue White Man land. Uh, you can turn it into a flying. I don't know if it's a 4-4. Four, four. Not entirely sure. It's pretty strong. Um, here's uh, the deal. 4-4. Four, four. Check it. With fly? Check it. It is a win con on its own in control decks. So in modern, a lot of times, this will be the only creature aside from like Snapcaster Mage that they need to run because it is a win con on its own. Okay. Um, so I actually am not opposed to that. I don't know that I would have had it in first, though. Dang, it is. Told it's you. a 4-4 four, four flying. And Vigilance. <laughs> yeah. It's real good. Wow. That's, <laughs> vigilance makes it super, super good. Um, yeah, so it is a win con for control decks. Uh, America control runs it. Really, anything blue white control in modern runs it. Um, yeah, so I can I can see why. Uh, I like it up there. I don't know if Ink Moth would be my number one. Um, I would potentially switch those two, but I do think uh, I I think Celestial Colony is a good pick. Okay, I like it. Other ones that we had, Shambling Vent actually got three votes. It was in fourth. Uh, Creeping Tar Pit, which I think is strictly better than Shambling Vent, to be honest, got two votes. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have Live Link, but... Um, yeah, but it's unblockable. Um, it's true. Fairy Conclave and uh, Treetop Village, shout out to the old school ones, got a vote. Yeah. Uh, Lava Claw Reaches? I don't know about that one. Uh, <laughs> it sneaks at you, though. Yeah. Uh, Raging Ravine also got three votes, which was up there. Mistress Factory, which I think is a good one um oh stirring wildwood that's which i don't one. necessarily i don't i like stirring wildwood but i just don't think it's good enough personally no it's a green white man land i i think it's good i don't get i like most man lands so don't get me wrong but i Let's just don't see. think it's in the top for me westvale abbey shout out to alex who suggested westvale, westvale abbey. abbey's awesome um very cool clearly not the best maybe in commander it's really good but everywhere else <laughs> it's not yeah it's very well it's just got reach, man. Yeah, it, it's Although good. Although it turns into a 3-4 for 3. Yeah, it's cheap, uh, which is good. And it does go in a lot of the Selesnia-style modern decks. It's good. But yep. it's just, it's, it's not up there for me. It's not a colonnade, you know? Sure. So that's it, though. It's not flying. It's not up there. Um, <laughs> I guess you're right. Um, that's <laughs> it, though, for the question of the week. This week, we do appreciate all the participation. Uh, you guys have really done re- like super well with all of these questions. Yeah, we get I a lot of comments. Um, it's great. You guys are doing the most. We will have another one going up Again, Monday. Kevin, that's not a good thing, man. What? You're doing the most. We had we had to talk about this. What? During our Rocket League nights. You're doing the oh, most. Oh, no, I know. I like still saying it. <laughs> but the youths, Kevin, the youths. I don't care. All right. <laughs> all right. I'm doing the most. Yeah, you are. Anyway, <laughs> we will have the next question of the week going up on Monday, so oh, stay tuned man. for that, uh, along with our deck tech suggestion, which oh, will go up on Tuesday. It's correct. Legacy? Legacy is this week. We've already got a lot of good suggestions, so we encourage you oh, to sweet. leave a few comments before we go off and record that video. Um, but yeah, that's it. All right. Last thing. One more. Two more things, technically. One big thing. Uh First of all, sponsored by Grand Slam, we have our Crack a Pack series. Oh, um, yeah. as always, that was a good simultaneous reach there. Do you want to bless your pack with my luck from last Will time? Will you? Oh wait, I have to hold it correctly. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right, cool. Your pack's been blessed. May you pull that thing you want. I really hope so. Which is a Rune Up Excavator. Oh, I didn't bless it for that. Oh crap! Do it again. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right, we got it. We got it. We're safe. We're safe. You got I yours hedged. last time. I did. So Which, what is your new my gold new card? gold card? Has to be Torment of Hail. Card is so good. I love it. Yeah, I love it. It should go in most places. It's too good. I agree. It's so good. I love it. Um, I think here's why I'm thinking it's not going to get played everywhere. Yeah. It doesn't do enough once it's cheap. Like if you only do it for four, they just pitch two cards they don't want, right? Like that's it. 
If you do it for like six, will it's a bunt. Will it's a bunt. Did you get it? How did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> I got it. Wow. What the crap? <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I'm, You're doing this from here on out. I hope you know. I'm blessing each of your packs. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, yeah, I got Root App Excavator, which I don't really care about the rest of the pack. I'm probably going to pick it. Jeez. Um, I just think it works really well with all the deserts. Uh, because That's true. You can cycle them and then pull them back, which is really great. Um, <laughs> I, I'm gonna pick it. Yeah, I like honestly, it. I think that's a really good pick. Uh, I think so too. I think it's good, good and limited. I, d I think it's probably better in constructed, but I think yeah, it's yeah. still really good. In, yeah, in uh, limited. So that was my pick. <laughs> Look at you! I can't believe that worked. Look at you! <laughs> uh, so I got Swarm Intelligence. Um, I I don't like it for limited. Good in commander, but that might be it. And this is actually the third one I've ever opened. Uh, <laughs> whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may copy it. Choose new targets for the copy. Yeah, it's not that good. No. Yeah. It's well, again good in commander. Yeah, but... good in commander because you can break it there. Got unsummoned. <laughs> so I pick it. That's a good pick. Heck yeah. Um, you Up pick until three. You pick as many of these as your past <laughs> because it's that good. Okay. There's never a situation where it's bad. Run a run a deck with forty unsummons and twenty lands. <laughs> First lead. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You don't open forty packs and collect forty unsummons. You get forty picks. That's all I'm saying. Drew, it could happen. No, it would never happen. No, because there's too many intelligent players picking up unsummon. <laughs> yeah. It's you. You just need to, You just need to read a little bit about uh, unsummon's strength, okay. my friend. Okay maybe you've uh undervalued it yeah okay maybe so a lot you undervalued it a lot that's fine uh listeners tell us email us why he's wrong <laughs> i know he is help me convince him <laughs> y'all gotta help me um the pat god can only do so much from here <laughs> on out, so yeah email us at it.resolves.mtg at gmail.com correct shameless plug I also just wanted to remember our email because it's been a really long time since I've had to use it for yeah, anything. Yeah, we used it to sign up for a bunch of things <laughs> when we were making our channel. And that's about it. Yep. I get emails to my phone, but I mean, it's all like Star City news and stuff like that because I signed up for all the news stuff. Well, yeah, so I'd be able to keep track. But, but yeah, right. so I don't really use the email that much. I'm not Make us use you. the email. You guys. Call to action for you guys. Ding, if you just email ding, us hi, that's fine. I won't be upset. I'll say hi back. I'll send you an unsummon. <laughs> no, I won't. I like him too much. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, All right. All right, people. Uh, thank you for tuning in for what will be our first episode of this mini series. Uh, yeah. Thank you to our sponsor, Grand Slam. We also want to mention we do have a giveaway going on right now that started on Wednesday. All you have to do, follow us on Facebook. Follow Grand Slam on Facebook if you'd like uh, to be entered to win an Arch Enemy set. Yes. Each of us are giving away one. You can enter both, so you do have mm -hmm. the potential to win both of them. Uh, you can also get an extra entry if you share the post and tag us in it. Now, um, folks, we've having, had some issues. Yeah, yeah, we've had some trouble with folks tagging us. Um, I We didn't talk about this before, but maybe we need to change the... Yeah, I think we will know when you share it, uh, if you do share the original post. So yes. if you share that, we will enter you to win. You don't necessarily have to tag us. So Yeah, just since, to... since we're having some issues. Yes, so. so just keep that in mind. You can just share us. If you can tag us, it's great. We'd appreciate it. But Super. you also just need to share it. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, feel free to enter that. That is, We're going to choose winners for that on August 2nd, yep. uh, which is this coming Wednesday. Ooh. Um, so... Get your uh, get your entries in. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you guys again. I think that's gonna be it from us. My name is Kevin. My name's Will. And this has been It Resolves. I'm unsummon you. <laughs> <laughs>